Hello, this is Jam Master Daniel 96, and today I'm going to read you the excerpt from the upcoming book, Thrawn Alliances, which is coming out sometime this summer, I think. Like, I think it's coming out like late midsummer this year, and this is the excerpt I'm reading is from StarWars.com, and let's begin. I have sensed a disturbance in the Force. Emperor Palpatine paused, stretching out his thoughts. The two men were standing before his throne, awaiting their reactions. No, not men, of course, not men. Men were insignificant, pitiful creatures, fit only to be ruled, or, or imitated, or intimidated, or sent to die in battle. These were far more than mermen. A Chiss Grand Admiral, a, st a strategic and tactical genius, a Sith Lord, ruthless and powerful in the Force. They were watching him. Palpatine knew each trying in his own way to gleam some understanding as to why they'd been summoned. Grand Admiral Thrawn was observing his Emperor's voice, face, and body stance. Lord Vader, in contrast, was stretching out with the force toward his master. Palpatine could feel all that, but he could also feel the tension between these, his two most useful servants. The tension wasn't simply because each wished to be one, to be the the one standing alone at his master's side at the center of imperial power. That was certainly part of it. But there was more, much more. Thrawn had recently suffered a serious defeat, permitting a small group of rebels he, success he successfully trapped on the planet Adalon to a slip through his fingers that failed, had earned Vader's contempt. Thrawn, in his turn, strongly opposed the Death Star project favored by Vader, Grand Moff Tarkin, and Palpatine himself, pushing instead for his own prized TIE Defender project on Lothal. So far, Thrawn's opposition had not reached the level of open resistance, but the Emperor knew it was only a matter of time when Vader knew that as well. But Palpatine hadn't brought them here to offer an opportunity for reconciliation, certainly not to meditate personally in their conflict. There were other far deeper considerations. Thrawn had given his oath of loyalty to the Empire, but that loyalty had never been fully tested. Vader stood beside Palpatine as a Sith Master's apprentice, but his previous life among the Jedi could not simply be ignored, nor casually, nor dismissed. Here, with this intriguing force disturbance was the opportunity to deal with both issues. Palpatine raised his eyes briefly toward the high window in the throne room. The Star Destroyer Chimera was visible in the distance, a barely discernible arrowhead shaped floating high above Coruscant's buildings and sky lanes. Normally, military craft that large weren't permitted closer than low orbit, but Palpatine had wished the ship to be present during this meeting and subtle reminder to both of his servants of what had been given to Thrawn and what could be taken away. Vader spoke first, as Palpatine had known he would perhaps use sense the rogue Jedi, Kanan Jarrus, he said, 
where the creature Gre or the creature Admiral Thrawn claimed to have encountered on Adalon. Palpatine smiled thinly. Of course, he wasn't sensing Jarrus that particular disturbance had long since noted, codified, and dismissed the fact Vader knew only too well the suggestion was nothing more than a reminder to Thrawn and to Palpatine of the Chiss humili humiliating defeat. Thrawn gave no visible reaction to Vader's comment, but Palpatine could sense a hardening of his attitude. He already promised the Emperor that he would deal with Jairus and the Phoenix rebels who had so recently slipped through his fingers. Much of that failure had been due to factors not under Thrawn's control, which was why Palpatine hadn't taken the Seventh Fleet away from him. But Vader had no patience for failure of any sort, no matter what the reason of excuse for now. He was waiting, but he was more than ready to step in to solve that particular problem if the Grand Admiral failed. The disturbance comes from neither, Palpatine said. It something new, something different. He looked back. And he looked back and forth between his servants. Something that will require both of you working together to uncover. Again, neither of them visibly reacted but Palpatine could sense their surprise, their surprise and their reflective protests working together that this time it was the Chiss who spoke first with all due respect your majesty I believe my duty and my abilities would be best used elsewhere, he said. The rebels who escaped Adalon must be tracked down and eliminated before they can regroup and join the other cells. I agree, the Emperor said, but the Seventh Fleet and Commander Wallar can deal with that without you for now. Grand Moff Tarkin will also be joining the Commander while his new assignment is being prepared for him. Palpatine sensed a flicker in Vader's emotions, perhaps a hope that Thrawn would mistakenly believe this was the right time and place to once again raise objections to the Death Star project. Palpatine paused, offering the Grand Admiral the opportunity to do just that, but Thrawn remained silent. While Waldar and Tarkin find a deal with the rebels and the Emperor continued, you and Lord Vader will take your flagship to deal with this other matter. Yeah, understood, your majesty, Thrawn said. May I point out that Governor Tarkin is less familiar than I am with this particular rebel cell. Perhaps a more efficient approach would be for Lord Vader to be offered one of my Star Destroyers and seek out this disturbance on his own. Palpatine felt a sudden stirring of anger from his apprentice at Thrawn's unthinking choice of phrase. A Lord of the Sith was not offered a ship. He took what he wanted when he wanted it, but like Thrawn, Vader knew when to remain silent. You surprise me, Admiral Thrawn Pal Palpatine said. I would have expected a certain eagerness to journey within sight of your home. Thrawn's glowing red eyes narrowed slightly and Palpatine felt his sudden caution, excuse me, your Majesty, the disturbance is located at the edge of your 
unknown regions, the Emperor said, it appears to be centered on a planet named Batu. Again, the again he sensed a reaction to the name. This time, the reaction came from both of them. I believe you have heard of it. Thrawn eyes were hooded, the expression on that blue skin face swirling with his memories. Yes, he murmured, I have indeed heard of it. As of course had Vader, it was the place where he and Thrawn had long interfered a bait unwittingly with one of Palpatine's plans, but again Vader remained silent. Very well then, Palpatine said, you... Admiral will command he looked at Vader. You, Lord Vader, will deal with the disturbance. Yes, your highness, Thrawn said. Yes, my master, Vader said. Palpatine leaned back into the depths of his throne, then go. The two servants turned and walked toward the door between the double line of red-cloaked Imperial Guards silently lining their path. Palpatine watched them go, the Chiss with his white Grand Admiral's uniform. The Sith grabbed his black, his long cloak swirling behind him. The solution of the particular puzzle would indeed require both of them, but more importantly it would address Palpatine's lingering questions. He smiled thinly, time for Thrawn to face his future, time for Vader to face his past. And that is from the excerpt of the Thrawn Alliances book, and it pretty much is going to be like, I think, as, it, as what I read in the excerpt, it looks like this book will be set between Rebels Season 3 and 4, and it looks like we're going to see Vader and Thrawn in action in this book, and it looks pretty interesting, and we're, I think we're going to learn more about the unknown regions in the new canon, and the book, or, and as I was speaking earlier, when I, when I was unsure on the release date, it will, lie, it will be in stores July 24th, 2018, and you can pre-order it now, and I will link the excerpt in the description, I mean, I will link it down below, and catch you guys next time, bye.